the thing we see on TV, the, the, the lawyer who's in the court with the, the robe and the judge and the witnesses, it's not the um, majority of lawyers who, who do that. So it's really different. Hello, and welcome again to the Pathways podcast, where we explore different careers in the Quebec City region. I'm your host, Susanna Tang, from Voice of English Speaking Quebec. Today, we're taking a closer look at the law profession and speaking with Jessica Gauthier and Catherine Pilot Coulomb. They are specialists in insurance law and work for the firm Stain Mana. Catherine, Jessica, let's start at the beginning. Why did you choose to study law? The reason why I chose law, the, the story I like to tell, is that at first I wanted to be a doctor or a nurse. And at some point I saw blood and then I discovered that I could not be a doctor and neither a nurse. <laughs> so uh, when I was in CGEP, I just, I chose to study law because I was always sort of interested in the that's su that subject in laws and, uh, you know, advocating for some cause. Very good. How about you, Jessica? What uh, kind of inspired you? To <laughs> well, when I was young, really young, I wanted to be a mailman or a mailwoman. <laughs> That's really <laughs> funny. Uh, but in third grade, my grandfather died. And then I went to the notary with my mom. And at that point, I knew I wanted to study law. I, at first, I wanted to be a notary. So that's why I went to Sherbrooke and study law. But during my first year uh, in university, I realized notary was really not for me. I chose to, to become a lawyer instead. Um, but it's the same background. The, the bachelor degree is the same for notaries and lawyers. After the, the first three years, then you choose. But uh, right from the start, uh, finally, I knew that I wanted to be a lawyer. I wanted to argue. <laughs> I'm a litigator, so <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. So litigator, that's a, it's a great fancy word. What does that ex actually mean? Um, a litigator is a sort of lawyer that, or that goes in front of courts and judges, a plea in front of the, of the judge, because it's not all, every lawyer that is a litigator. I mean, you don't have to have a certain certificate to be a litigator. You just uh, start in a law firm and you start in a team of uh, a litigation team. So not all lawyers are litigators. Next, I asked them about a typical day at the office. Here's what Jessica said. The thing that's fun with, with this job is that there's no regular day, I would say. Mm -hmm. Well, every day is different. I usually have between... 80 to 120 files, open files. So uh, every day I work on different files for different clients, uh, different cases. We have uh, examinations of witnesses. We have hearings. Well, it's it's less often, but uh, and then we have also to to meet the clients, meet the witnesses. We're on the phone a lot. We receive a lot of emails. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so now it goes really fast with the emails. Information spreads really fast and you have to, to get back to your opponent, to get back to the judge, the court, your client. So it's, uh, it's a lot of work, but uh, every day is different. Anyone interested in law has heard about something called the bar. Listen up as Jessica and Catherine explain what the bar is and just how tough it can be. If you want to be a lawyer, you have to pass the bar. And the bar is, it can be four months or eight months. You have classes every day, for example, every morning or every afternoon. And afterwards, uh, there are two, well, one exam that is splitted in two different days, uh, four hours each exam. You could say that the exam compared to our life as a lawyer can be sort of like in a, a hearing before the court because you can arrive to the hearing not well prepared but then there might be great consequences <laughs> uh, and of course there are greater consequences than uh, failing an exam but still it's, it's the same thing for a student if you, you see there's a due date there's the midterm exam for example you have to study you have to organize your life in order to be able to arrive to this date well prepared so you can a little bit compare in that sort of way. Yeah, I think that the goal with the bar is to make sure that people learn how to manage stress. 
yeah. before they enter in their working life or the adult life. <laughs> so now I think I'm going to ask you about, you know, my joke all the time. To you, <laughs> everything I know about law, I learned from TV. <laughs> so can you tell us how law in real life is different from TV? I would say it is slower than what you see on TV. On TV, they're always in front of courts. There is always different events that uh, happens that makes the TV show really interesting. But in real life, yes, I mean, you know, courts are known to be to have delays <laughs> and to be not really fast. So that's the same thing with um, a, a law job. And like Catherine said, preparation is the key. So a lot of our work is to prepare for those hearings. But in in suits, for example, um, they, <laughs> they are always uh, in court the next day. And But it's not the case in real life. And again, for example, in suits, there is a lot of blackmail uh, during the <laughs> negotiation. Uh, that's not the case in real life. We don't know anything uh, <laughs> suspect on <un> judges <laughs> or uh, nothing like that. So we have to argue with, with the law and with the fact that we have in every cases and not with what the, the, the lawyer did 20 years ago. <laughs> Another difference from TV is that TV tends to portray lawyers as either combative or ultra-competitive. But Catherine and Jessica insist that it doesn't work that way. It's important to have mm. good relations with, with your, your opponents, with other lawyers, with other firms, with your colleagues, because it's a lot easier. Well, yeah, Quebec City yeah, is a small, really small that. city, so you always have to work with pretty much the same people from the other firms. So, so if you have a conflict uh, with one attorney, it can your case can be long. And it can be, it's really less fun and less effective. Uh, so it costs it, more to your client. Yeah. Uh, thank you for bringing it back to the Quebec City context, because uh, the next question I wanted to ask you is about English. How often do you use English in your law practice? It depends on your industry. Uh, I'm an insurance lawyer. So we have clients uh, in Toronto, in Montreal. There are insurers that, for example, Lloyd's is in London. Uh, AIG is based in the U.S. Uh, so all, all big insurance companies are basically uh, using English as a first language. So we of often have to report to clients in English. Sometimes we also have to file motions or proceedings in English in order for our client to be able to read it, accept it, and understand it. Um, so, uh, well, I would well, every week I have to use English. It's, it's really important. Would you say uh, the same thing, Catherine? Wait, um, it happens more and more often to have to use English in in the everyday life, in our in our life. I mean, it's not only in insurance law; it's in all sort of all sort of field of practice. There are clients who speak English. There are opponents who speak English. I, for example, I have a case where the opponent is a lawyer in Toronto and his client is in the U.S. And every time we have conference calls, we exchange emails, it is in English. Or sometimes my client do speak French, but the opponent speak English. So uh, if I defend interest, the interest of my client, but then the, the, the plaintiff is Anglophone, so all the procedures are in English, so I have to understand to read English, and um, the examination can also be in English, even if we're in Quebec City. So, Yeah, and often we have to, to file motions against, uh, I don't know, uh, manufacturers that are in mm -hmm. the U.S. or... In other, in other countries, uh, even China. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, so English is really, really important. And also, we're in 2020. Now, people work from home. People work by video conference. It tends to be more global. So more and more, we can see that clients come from other provinces, other countries. Uh, so it's really less a, a Quebec City market. And uh, if, if you want to have a, a 
big interesting cases you may want to work with big companies that are based in other other countries now some law firms have other offices in in other provinces in other countries even they're called national firms mm-hmm. um, so if you want to work in those kind of firms you may have to use english with your colleagues for example in toronto or in in ottawa even in the same firm And there are a lot of those firms in Quebec City. So you can work in a, a national law firm, but that is ba- that has a base in Quebec City. So you, you don't have to leave the city to work in those sort of firms. That's really good news for our students who are looking for work opportunities in English here in Quebec City. We also tend to think of lawyers as workaholics who put in a lot of extra hours. Is that true? Well, the, that's the hard part. Yeah. Because it's a job that is really exciting and it takes a lot of it it's a big part of your life, but it's always a choice. It depends how you work. Uh, I'm not a morning person. I'm not at the office early, so I will leave the office during the evening. Uh, but some of my colleagues are here at seven and they leave at four, but they work all the day through and they're really efficient. What's good with our job is that you choose your schedule. Uh, so you can you can start early, you can leave early, you can leave later in the evening. Uh, it's your choice and, and you, you can do 70 hours a week or you can do uh, 35 hours a week, but your, your, your paycheck is going to be related to what you do. You will still have a nice salary if you if you do 35 hours a week, but but it's it's a it's a performance job I would say. So so if you want more, you can give more. You can always give more. Don't give too much because <laughs> uh, the, the health is really important. And you cannot do 70 hours a week uh, for uh, 10 years. Um, I would not suggest that, and I'm not able to do it. So uh, honestly, I cannot say how many hours a week uh, I do, because it, it depends of the week, it depends of the cases. When I have a hearing, of course, my week is going to be longer. It really depends of your cases. Uh, from from one week to another, it, it, it's, uh, it's different. And from one lawyer to another, it's really different too. Another thing that came up was the fact that laws are not static. They evolve as some laws are removed, added, or modified. So how do they stay on top of these changes? I think it's the same thing in a lot of jobs. Uh, you have to be prepared to to learn all your life. For example, uh, there was a new code of civil proceedings in 2016, and I finished uh, law school in 2009. So I had to learn a new code in 2016, uh, seven years after I, I finished university. But uh, again... You have to be prepared and, and to be good in what you do, you have to be on point and uh, be, be ready to, to learn uh, what's new, what to, to make sure that uh, you're, you do your job well. And finally, it's time for the last question. What do you love about your job and what makes your job interesting? When you choose a job, the team is really a big a big part of your job because you're there for a lot of hours during the week. So it's important to to have fun at your job with your colleagues. That that's a that's a big that's a big part for me. We have a really really nice team. And we cannot fool ourselves. Being a lawyer is a hard job. You do long sometimes long day uh, at work. A lot of hard works. So you have to to like to love your job and a good way to like going to work is that you have a good team that is uh, at your work. So I do 100% agree with Jessica. Uh, and also because our job is as we've said it earlier every day is different even if it's not the same as TV shows it is still really exciting. <laughs> And um, so that's, you don't see the time passing. You don't see the, the days uh, passing. Really often it happens to me that I just look back and I say, my God, it's been a month since this sort of even happened. And what have I done with my time? It's going too fast. So that's, that's um, one of the reasons why it's, it is also interesting to be a lawyer. 
And that's all for this episode. Thank you again to our guests, Catherine Pilot Coulomb and Jessica Gauthier for their valuable insights. We would also like to acknowledge the Government of Canada for funding this initiative. Join us next time for our talk with Minister Jean-Yves Duclos about his work as a Member of Parliament. This is the Pathways Podcast. Signing off, until next time.